Well, it's really great to be here. I'm excited to tell you about a project that I'm in the middle of that's the most interesting thing I've ever worked on. But I'm also relieved to be here because it means I get to stop revising my TED Talk. I think this is version <laughs> number 378 or something like that. Um, I am a journalist, and I like questions. So I'm going to start with a question. Um, this is a question that I use to guide me in my work. What would Peter do? It's sort of my compass to make sure that I'm on the right track. Now, Peter Jennings was my closest colleague in the years that I worked in network news. He was a dear friend, and needless to say, he was an extraordinary journalist. The most important lesson that I learned from Peter is that every once in a while, a story comes along and sort of grabs you by the throat and it won't let go. And when that happens, it's your obligation as a journalist to follow the truth wherever it takes you. And the story I'm about to tell you about has taken me to a whole new way to use journalism. And it, needless to say, it started with a question, how do you end global poverty? When we were asked that recently, we set out to do what journalists do, which is to ask questions for experts in the field of poverty. And this funny thing started to happen. First, there was an agricultural expert. That's when it happened the first time. And after talking to us for an hour or so about hybrid crops and irrigation and things like that, he sort of lowered his voice like he was about to tell us a secret. And he said, you know, there is one thing that actually works to help reduce global poverty. Educate girls. And then it happened again, and then it happened again. Experts in all kinds of fields having nothing to do with education told us the same thing. When you educate girls, extraordinary things happen. Now, we're journalists, and we did our reporting, and it's true. When you educate girls, all kinds of wonderful things happen. And I just want to read this part because it's really important, and I want to make sure that I get it exactly right. Educated girls marry later. They have fewer children. They earn more money. They're far less vulnerable to sexual abuse and exploitation. They immunize their children and educate the next generation. And that starts a ripple effect that transforms families, communities, and entire countries. There's a woman we met who is an expert in girls' education, and she said something I'll always remember. She said, investing in girls isn't just the right thing to do. She said, it's stupid not to do it. And I've always remembered that. Now, when you confront something that's so powerful and so true and yet so unknown, that's what we journalists live for. But the rules of journalism that I grew up with somehow seem not to fit the situation. And that's what makes this so interesting. We had to do something different. Here's what we're doing. We created a project called 10 Times 10. It's about changing minds, changing lives, and changing policy. Let me start by telling you about the changing minds part. We're making a film. And I just want to say a couple of things about it. First of all, it's 10 extraordinary stories about 10 extraordinary girls confronting extraordinary challenges. That's where the 10 times 10 part comes from. And the second thing I want to say is I've been fortunate enough in my career to do some things that worked out pretty well. But the creative opportunity in storytelling in 10 times 10, forget the issue, just the creative opportunity to make something that's really compelling is unlike anything I've ever encountered in my entire career. Now, you don't have to believe me. Don't have to take my word for it. We're going to make a film. You can see it and decide for yourself. But let's just say that I am right, and we make this remarkable film. Then what? Now, in the world of traditional journalism that I've lived in my entire career, that's where we'd leave it. You find your story, try to make it great, put it out there, hope something happens. And even documentaries that are advocacy films, for those films, oftentimes the strategy for impact is an afterthought. And it's really just as much about getting bigger audiences for the film as it is about creating lasting change. Well, we're doing the opposite. We're creating a strategy for change from the very beginning. We've already created it, we're already implementing it, and we haven't shot a single frame of the film. Now, that's where the changing lives part comes in. We did our reporting and we went out and looked for organizations that are incredibly effective, that are already changing lives for girls. And we turned them into our partners you're going to see four of them come up here. Now, this partnership solves a huge problem for us, because if our film changes people's minds, through these partnerships, we have a way to give our audiences direct access to do specific things that actually help girls. And that's a big departure for journalism, because we're giving them our material. We're not just 
uh, having them do something later. And it solves a problem for them too, because they can take what we give them and do a, a whole bunch of things. Let me give you two examples. They can use the film to raise funds, and the funds that they raise go to scale their programs and increase their impact for helping girls. And another example, Room to Read, one of our partners is going to use our film as a teaching tool in their classrooms to teach girls literacy and to show them models for success. This is a huge departure, as I said before, because traditional journalism is about exclusivity. But what we're doing is about sharing. It's about ubiquity, because that's what creates impact. Now, the most power, some of the most powerful institutions in the world, of course, are corporations, and we're partnering with them, too. Traditional journalists don't do that, but we're doing it. And in September, at the Clinton Global Initiative, we announced a partnership with the Intel Corporation that involves a multi-million dollar commitment to help fund 10 times 10. The money's essential, and we love it, but corporations giving money to a good cause is not new. What is new is everything else they're doing. And let me give you a couple of examples of that. Intel is integrating 10 times 10 in their marketing. That changes minds. They're partnering with our partners. That will change lives. And they're using 10 times 10 to mobilize the 83,000 employees around the world to join the movement to help change the rules for girls. That's the kind of thing that changes policy. And I want to emphasize this is not a sponsorship. It's a partnership. And it's a whole new way to leverage corporate resources in order to create global change. Now, we're also partnering with Her Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan. Queen Rania is the most effective and passionate advocate for changing the rules for the girls in the entire world. And just the other night, she was at a 10 times 10 event in Los Angeles, speaking to some of the most powerful people in the entertainment industry, and I guarantee you they heard what she had to say. So Queen Rania can create change from the top down. She can also create change from the bottom up. She has 1.3 million followers on Twitter. And the, that's a lot. That's a lot. Now, these new tools for connecting people are essential to building grassroots movements, and they're a critical part of the architecture of 10 times 10. This is Gregor Baylor. He's one of our funders. And I want to emphasize that philanthropy is critical to what we're doing on 10 times 10. We couldn't do anything without philanthropy. But that's not why I'm showing you his picture. The reason I'm showing you this is he's the former CIO of the NASDAQ, and he's contributing to 10 times 10 in a whole bunch of new ways that have nothing to do with money. He's leveraging his relationships and his experience to do a bunch of things for us. And the point is that 10 times 10 is looking for collaborators, and collaborators don't just have to have money. There are lots of ways to contribute to 10 times 10, and I hope you people are beginning to think about things that you can do yourselves. And now, here's the thing I want to point out. I think you're starting to see the architecture of 10 times 10. It's a set of interconnected partnerships designed to create impact. And it's something that has never been done before. And the reason, one of the things that's most exciting about it is that it's scalable. And the reason it's scalable is that we're not building a bunch of new stuff. What we're doing is we're taking things that already exist and, and are very effective, and we're putting them together. We're connecting them to each other in ways that have never been done before. Now, we are doing one thing that's new, and that is telling stories. That's our expertise. This is one of the girls whose story we're going to tell in 10 times 10. Her name is Chanta. She's 14. She's from Cambodia. And when she was six, both her parents died. And she ended up going to the garbage dump in Phnom Penh every day to pick trinkets out of the garbage and try to sell them for food. She was at very high risk to being drawn into the sex trade, and she was almost without hope. But then through a kind of miracle, she managed to be rescued from that and brought into school, and now she's absolutely thriving. Now, what I've told you is just her backstory. The creative concept that we're going to use to bring her story to the screen is like nothing you've ever seen. I promise you that. And stories are a way to connect to people emotionally if stories well told can change the way people see the world, and that provokes action. 10 times 10 is about harnessing the energy that comes from great storytelling and converting it into definable, measurable action through the architecture, through our partners, the people you see on the screen. Now, what I've described, as I'm sure you can see, is a long way, goes way beyond the boundaries of traditional journalism. 
10 times 10 is advocacy multiplied by creative and authentic partnerships. It's all about impact and new ways to use journalism. So the question I started with is a natural one to ask now. What would Peter do? Because what we're talking about is a giant leap for people like me who were trained in the old world of journalism. Would Peter make that leap today? Well, I can't say for sure, but what I can say is this. Peter was no friend of the status quo. And Peter believed deeply in the search for truth, which is the essential mission of all journalists. And so do I. And 10 times 10 is about a very powerful truth. When you create conditions that get girls in good schools, and you keep them there through adolescence, extraordinary things do happen. And that's good for all of us. Thank you very much.